So here we go. We're back with a new speaker now. Craig is a, a, you've been a Facebook friend and so on for a while, and I've known of you, and I guess you've known of me for a long time, but this is the first time you're speaking at a, a Monterey County Skeptic Camp, which is really cool. And welcome to the to the, the universe of uh, Monterey County Skeptics, which is always fun. And I love your shirt, by the way, the Skeptoid shirt that you have. Not Mark bad. Edward has that same one, um, science is greater than pseudoscience. And it's really, really cool to see that. Um, I love it. So Craig is going to be giving us a talk on food and how to eat uh, skeptically. And uh, I'm really looking forward to this. I've just been eating junk since we started this. I had a piece of leftover pizza, which wasn't all that appetizing. So uh, hoping you're going to be able to give us some great information. But And plug your book. All right. You're set. All right. Uh, is that showing up all right? Yes, it is. Okay. Uh, one thing that'll probably, thanks for, for having me, by the way. One thing that'll probably change is that after this, you won't call any food junk. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start off by, oh, start off by getting the keyboard focus where it needs to be. Um, start off by letting you know that everything I'm going to tell you is good news. I have to preface it that way because it's entirely possible that at some point you may feel a little threatened or defensive. And that is not your fault. Uh, it's because some very big industries have spent millions of dollars and decades of time uh, filling our minds with misinformation. Uh, I do have the science to back all this up, but don't have the time to give you all the footnotes in this presentation. Uh, but I hope that uh, what I'll be able to accomplish here, oh, I need to move some faces so I can see my notes. How's this gonna work? There we go. Um, I hope to uh, not only help you get a little healthier today, but help you save some money. And I'm gonna go really fast. First, we are so incredibly lucky. We live in a time when <laughs> that's, unprecedented in, in the history, as we know, the variably long history of the earth, uh, our ancestors all evolved in scarcity, right? You ate what you could when you could. We get to choose what we eat. Most of the people on this call get to make that choice, and that's just an amazing thing. Uh, we have the safest food supply in history. It's amazing how good it is. And yet, why are we so stressed about our food? Everyone worries about food. We're gonna learn why, but just before I tell you why, uh, I'm going to give you all the information you need about nutrition. You should enjoy a variety of foods, mostly plants, including plenty of fruits and vegetables, not too much and not too little. Anybody giving you advice more specific than that is probably selling something. Uh, an important disclaimer, listen to your doctor. If your doctor tells you something different than what I'm telling you, go with the doctor. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to claim expertise I don't have. Uh, I do ask that it be a, a real doctor or a qualified practitioner. Uh, n that means not a naturopath, homeopathist, chiropractor, anybody like that. Stick with actual medicine, but yeah, if they, if they tell you something different than what I say, go with them. Uh, let's talk about what food, oh, this talk also, sorry. It, it does assume that we're talking about people with no specific food allergies or conditions that impact their diet. This is just normal baseline sort of case. All right, what the heck is food? Uh, food is just something that gives you some combination of one or more of the following seven things. You can get carbohydrates, proteins, or fats. These are known as the macronutrients because most of the nutrition you get are from these. Um, you also get hydration, which is just a fancy word for water. And then there are vitamins and minerals, which are chemicals your body needs, but which it can't synthesize itself. Uh, you either need uh, some other organism to synthesize it, or you need to get it out of the ground. And there's fiber, 
which is a sort of a weird category because your body only sort of uses it directly. It mostly uses it indirectly, but it is something you need and it's something that's part of food. So that's all food is. Gives you some combination of those seven things. Uh, this implies a number of interesting things. It means that there is no such thing as a superfood. There are no health foods. There are no unhealthy or junk foods. Feel better, Susan? Uh, there is just food. If it gives you some of those seven things, it's just food. So this also means that all food is healthy. Now, this is where people usually, I hear record scratch sound effects. People, what? What are you saying? Are you saying all food's the same? No, I'm not saying all food is the same. That would be silly. Uh, what I'm saying is that any food can be part of a healthy diet. And what I want you to start thinking of is in terms of your overall diet and not individual foods. Uh, you can't compare two foods and say one is healthier than another because there's no single axis metric for healthy. Uh, let me give you a hypothetical. <clears throat> Pardon me a sec. Well, I say, which is healthier, broccoli or Nutella? The correct answer is it depends. If you happen to be a recovering anorexic, that Nutella will probably save your life. Uh, if you're a diabetic, you should probably minimize the Nutella and have a little more broccoli, right? You just can't call one healthier than another. Uh, so there are no unhealthy foods, but there are many unhealthy diets. Here's another way to think of that. What you eat today doesn't matter. What you eat this month matters a lot. Getting, getting the idea? I want to talk big picture. Um, by the way, you are not what you eat. When you eat a hamburger, the hamburger becomes you. You don't become a hamburger. So you can, <clears throat> you can forget that old idea of you are what you eat. Myth. Um, so I promise to save you some money, reduce your fear. Let's take a look at some fear-based marketing. Uh, first, why does fear work? Because as everybody in this audience knows, it's much easier to frighten people than to educate them. That's, that's our burden as skeptics, right? <clears throat> so where do food fears and fads come from? Uh, one is just misinformation. We will talk about some sources of that misinformation in a little bit. Uh, there's also confirmation bias. We're all familiar with that. That's exactly how the MSG scare happened. Um, and then a really interesting one is the fear of modernity. This is something we're actually battling on lots of fronts as skeptics, fear of modernity. What does the fear of modernity give us? Well, it gives us myths about how things were better long ago. Things are bad today, but long ago things were better. So you get things like the Garden of Eden. You get legends like Atlantis. And you get a uh, bunch of stuff. So here's some fear-based marketing terms. These terms are only about marketing and they're just designed to invoke fear uh, to sell food. Organic, completely a marketing term. We're not talking about organic chemistry, right? Uh, natural, well, you know, there's nothing more natural than getting attacked and mauled by a bear. Uh, GMO free, clearly fear of modernity. Gluten free, unless you have celiac, this is one exception. There are some people who do need to avoid gluten. For everybody else, it's uh, just a nutritious protein. Uh, but in terms of marketing food, none of these have any scientific or nutritional basis. Uh, the fear of modernity also gets us the anti-GMO movement. Uh, it gets us the naturalistic fallacy. Again, believing that natural is somehow better. Uh, gets people worried about toxins everywhere. Uh, I think it was Neil deGrasse Tyson who said the extent to which someone uses the word toxins is usually inversely proportional to their knowledge of chemistry. Um, but there really is no such thing 
as a toxin. There are only doses. There's actually a safe dose for anything and, and a dangerous dose for anything. And then uh, one of my favorite symptoms of the fear of modernity is the paleo diet. Okay, this is just the poster child cartoon version of the fear of modernity. Because even if we knew what they ate, which we don't really, uh, it would be impossible to eat their diet because the food supply has evolved even more than we have and the ingredients just don't exist anymore. That doesn't, however, prevent people from uh, doing things like this. I actually shot this in my local Costco. Yes, they're selling paleo pancake mix, just like cavemen <laughs> used to cook, I guess. Uh, some people worry about pesticides uh, on their food. Well, a couple of things to know about that. One is organic food, at least in America, does use them. Uh, and they tend to be more toxic and get used more because they're not as effective. Um, if you wash your produce, the dose of pesticide you get is going to be so far below anything that could possibly harm you that it, uh, that it does, doesn't even matter. And most of the, the uh, pesticides used on our crops aren't really very toxic to people anyway. Um, a lot of people don't know that glyphosate is less toxic to people than table salt. Uh, and the reason for that is that we aren't plants. It's kind of that simple. Uh, but most of the pesticides you eat are actually produced by the food you eat. Uh, for example, cabbage produces about 46 toxins on its own. Okay, so some common sources of misinformation. A really big one is the organic food industry. Uh, we'll talk about why they see that as a key part of their plan uh, a little later. Another one, of course, is the supplement industry, that giant unregulated monster that it is. Uh, there'll be more about them in a minute. Uh, there's also the alternative medicine or wellness industry. Has anybody seen the word wellness attached to anything that didn't turn out to be bullshit? I'm still waiting myself. Um, except for my pasta machine, which for some reason is called a wellness pasta machine. That, But the Italians, go figure. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> and then ideological groups. We could all name a few right now. <clears throat> Q. Um, they will come up with some weird misinformation. Religions are a big one. Uh, religions tend to come up with all sorts of strange ideas about what you should and should not eat. Uh, Ayurveda turns out to be a huge one of these. Some, some really crazy ideas about food come out of that one. And then one that, when, that surprised me a lot when I was researching the book and doesn't surprise any of us anymore, Russia. Uh, the two biggest sources of funding for anti-GMO misinformation are the organic food industry and Russia. But we all know why Russia is in the misinformation game these days. A uh, couple of other sources to be aware of. Gurus. Be aware of anybody who claims they've got the way to eat, right? The ideal diet, because there is no one ideal diet. Uh, this goes especially for lone wolf doctors. Uh, extra points deducted if they appear on their website wearing smock or scrubs, worse yet with a stethoscope around their neck. Um, another way to spot misinformation online is that there's a shopping cart. Don't get your nutritional information from any place that's selling stuff. It's pretty, uh, pretty self-explanatory when you think about it. Um, and never trust anybody who tries to frighten you away from a food or an ingredient. They're almost always selling something, either that or they don't know what they're talking about, or both. Uh, just get the fear completely out of your vocabulary there. Uh, so <clears throat> that means we can now relax about all of these because they're safe. Sugar, bacon, artificial sweeteners, GMOs, salt, MSG, and gluten, unless you have celiac. All nice and safe. 
Uh, <clears throat> okay. So what matters really is just your overall diet. Always think big picture. Don't stress over single meals or single ingredients. Remember, what you eat today doesn't really matter. Uh, some red flags to watch for on labels when you're shopping. Of course, watch out for organic. They're trying to scare you into spending more uh, natural, GMO-free, gluten-free unless you have celiac. And the quack Miranda warning. Uh, most of you probably know the quack Miranda warning. But for your edification, it is these statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. For the most part, when you see that on a product, just don't buy it. Again, the exception is if your doctor specifically tells you to get it. There are products that you can take under medical instruction that have this warning on it. But for the most part, uh, unless you haven't been, unless you've been told by your doctor to get it, if you see that on something, just put it back on the shelf. Uh, I said we we're going to talk about supplements. Supplement industry is really a piece of work. Uh, when you buy supplements that have that warning on them, uh, you are getting an unknown dose of an untested ingredient at an unknown purity with unknown contaminants that has not been shown to work and may not even be in the bottle. Uh, they've found lot of, lots of cases where it's just not even there. Um, so red flags to look for on supplement packages. If it says it boosts the immune system, that's not really a thing unless you mean vaccines. Uh, supports something. That's a claim they can get away with. Uh, clinically proven to. Now, it, I, you don't clinically prove anything really. Uh, and then also watch for the quack Miranda warning. Uh, okay, let's save a little money. Uh, there are no nutritional advantages to buying organic food. Uh, there just aren't. There's nothing inherently wrong with organic food. It's all fine food, uh, except for its uh, rather poor environmental impacts. But the food itself is okay. It just tends to be two to three times more expensive. So if you have the option to buy uh the non-organic version, do that. Save a lot of money. Uh, you don't need to buy supplements, again, unless your doctor tells you to. You don't need vitamin supplements. If you get a enough variety in your diet, it's very unlikely you'll need a vitamin. Uh, again, your doctor may tell you to, to treat a diagnosed deficiency or condition. Uh, other than that, it at the best, it's a waste of money that gives you expensive pee. And at the worst, uh, too much of some vitamins can actually be harmful because they do accumulate. Uh, mega doses of vitamins don't help with anything. Uh, another potential exception, though, is if you eat vegan, uh, you want to make sure you are not deficient on vitamin B12. Uh, so it's okay, okay to eat vegan, uh, but do make sure you get enough B12. You can skip buying probiotics. Uh, this is a really funny one because uh, there's, there's a lot of exciting science going on right now about our microbiome uh, in our gut. <clears throat> a lot of interesting things are likely to be found soon. Um, but there's currently no evidence that any probiotic supplements do anything or really that many of them survive the trip through the acid vat that is your stomach. Uh, so it's Harmless if it's there. I mean, <clears throat> if you eat yogurt, you're going to get some probiotics, whether you want it or not. Harmless, but you don't need them. Uh, okay. <clears throat> On to the big thing uh, but around which there's a lot of anxiety and misinformation, which is weight loss. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm going to tell you there are exactly two ways to lose weight. Surgery paying someone to cut it out of you, or a sustained calorie deficit. That's, uh, that's the end of the list. Uh, so everything you need to know about weight loss diets is that diets don't work. I will flat out say weight loss diets don't work. Uh, that's because temporary efforts don't yield long-term results. So never go on a diet. 
that's diet as a verb, like don't diet, right? Uh, this means a number of interesting things. One is that there is no such thing as a fattening food. There are no weight loss foods. Nothing you can ingest burns fat. It's another thing you can watch out for in marketing. Long-term calorie balance is the entire game when it comes to weight. Uh, the diet and wellness industries, again, there's that word wellness. They mostly target women, but they're happy to take everybody's money. Uh, they're pretty predatory. Um, all weight loss products and programs are scams. You can really just treat them that way. Uh, the few weight loss drugs that might work, and it's still kind of iffy, uh, only help to maintain that calorie deficit. There's no other magic that, that they're doing. Uh, and if they're available, they're available prescription only. So there are no valid, worthwhile, over-the-counter diet drugs. Uh, you can skip those. Uh, and the people who sell these and run these programs, they know that diets don't work, and that's good for repeat business. So that's they're not going to tell you that it doesn't work because they know you're just going to cycle through. So the way to eat is to think about variety. Uh, a fun way to gamify this is eat as many different species as you can. Just see how many you can have. Uh, if you go through the store looking at the main ingredient on things and noting what the main species is, you'll notice that it's pretty easy to get a narrow diet. But if you get plenty of veggies and fruits, you're going to get uh, more variety and vice versa. Uh, so, you know, for example, uh, potato chips and French fries, they just count as potatoes. They're both fine to have in your diet, but they don't give you variety points, right? Um, don't think about how healthy a food is. Again, you can't really measure healthy. Just think about what proportion it should play in your diet. You know, can I have a lot of this this month or should I have this as a treat every now and then? Uh, so the real key is to just, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> like I said, think about the proportion of your overall diet. So how should you eat? Enjoy a variety of foods, mostly plants, including plenty of fruits and veggies, not too much, not too little, or in other words, relax and enjoy your food. Available on Amazon in paperback, Kindle, and Audible, read by the author. And uh, thank you very much. Wow, that was great. I, I do have a bunch of licorice over here that I'm not gonna talk about. <laughs> I, I do like sweets. I really have some. Well, uh, the problem is I'll try to eat it as a meal. <laughs> Probably don't not do that. Day. Don't do that very often. I would say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very good. That was great. And boy, what a great mic you have there too. That sounded really good. Richard okay. Sarkis should have listened to that. I'm, I'm glad it was worth all the money I spent on this thing. Yeah. That sound is, sounds really, <laughs> really good. I'm letting more people in the room here as we speak. So we have a few questions. Let's see where we are here. All right. Um, let me get to the top of the list here. Okay, this one was asked way early in the in the any in the Q and A, so you may have answered it. It's from Glinda. She wants to know when washing your produce for pest, pest, pesticides, is it is just water okay? Do we need some sort of cleaner? Is a, is veg, veggie wash a scam? And I did say um, wash. <laughs> veggie wash. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, water is pretty much all you need, a, a really good rinse. A veggie wash won't hurt. Uh, I sometimes, depending on the produce, I, I use a solution like 50-50 vinegar and water. You can spray it on things. Uh, that would be more like um, uh, for, you know, strawberries and things that I want to, that's, that's more for bacterial things than pesticides. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the next question is, is it fair to be concerned about farm worker exposure to pesticides, even if consumers don't have to worry about them? That's from Deborah. Yeah, that's totally fair. It's outside the scope of the book. Um, I'm just talking about the your relationship with your food. Uh, there are there's specialized knowledge. Like I learned fairly recently that the pesticides used on organic bananas are less toxic to the people harvesting bananas than than the regular. 
But that takes some specialized knowledge, uh, and I'm trying to stay really general. Yeah, the the points you made were a lot of great talking point. How do I say? Great. The way you summarized it was just really simple. Like, there's no such thing as junk. Ham you were never a hamburger. You know, <clears throat> they were just all easy to. I tried to make the book very accessible. And I think that's a really great way of starting out. I'm sure there's probably extremes and so on at the end, uh, but at the, it's a, it sounded really easy to understand. Okay, here's from Janine. Um, I don't know if it's a question so much as organic may have a higher risk of contamination with E. coli and other bacteria because of production methods. Also uses more land for the same crop yield, so it's not good for the environment and pesticides. Is this the case, she said? Yeah, that, that's true. Organic uses about 20% more land, so it's a really serious hit. The, the world, if you want the world to eat organic, you get to pick which billions you want to starve. It's kind of how it works. Oh, ooh. Yeah. Um, we're, we're trying to have a, a you were here earlier, yeah. or were you here earlier for Linda Rose's <laughs> talk? And that was like, the movement. Mm, oh, it, that. it was no. pretty bad. Okay. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I some organic is fine, but it does use more land. Yeah. Okay. So I think, is this from, I'm not sure who this is from. There's a name at the top and there's a name at the bottom. There are vitamins and supplements that do meet FDA standards, but they are designed for I get, patients. I think it's the people who have um, had surgery for their, you know, had their stomach reduced. I think it's- Sure. Again, if the doctor says to take it, uh, I know someone who uh, was uh, prescribed melatonin to help with their um, uh, headaches. And the doctor was able to give a brand specific recommendation as they said, she said, I know that the this brand has the actual dose of melatonin it says on the label, right? Um, so yeah, there's, there's always that if the doctor says so, and I'm sure there are vitamins you would get in the hospital that, it's not the vitamins are bad, it's just that you don't need to go you don't need to go buy multivitamins. Right. I know. I, I'm my doc. My oncologist told me I all I need is a vitamin D and a vitamin B complex, and he doesn't yeah. want me taking anything else. And you do what your doctor says. Um, we only have a little bit more time. So what's the okay. skinny? I like the way they use this word skinny. On diet drinks, are they harmful in the long term? Are they a good alternative to sugar sugary sweets if they're calorie free? Uh, they are not harmful. Uh, the only exception is if you have a very rare genetic condition, you want to avoid aspartame. Other than that, for, for the vast majority of people, they're completely harmless in the doses you're going to get and an excellent uh, alternative to sugar if you're trying to lower the, the sugar in your diet. Okay. Um, maybe fill in and just if you don't have a chance to eat something, maybe a quick drink that has a lot of that in it would probably fill a mill, I guess. It's better than not having nothing, right? Well, they're non nutritive uh, you know, diet drinks have essentially no calories. There's so few calories that they don't count. So all, oh. all, all you'd get from them is, is hydration and nice flavor. Okay, so here we go. As a toxicologist, biochemist, I see most of this is valid. I guess that's what you mean is most of this is what you're saying. Uh, for example, but some things are not as valid. For example, right. fridge fries are not equivalent to eating potatoes. This is from Reed. But I think you were right. trying to be simplifying things. Yeah, what it, it, it's a valid point. I'm not saying they're equivalent. I'm saying that if you're if you're playing the how many different species can I eat game, you don't get to count uh, French fries and uh, baked potatoes as separate species because they're mainly just potatoes. That's what I meant. Okay, and fried foods, that kind of thing. For, French fries. <laughs> I love French well, fries. <laughs> I mean, it would be, and, and you also, you know, uh, uh, a hamburger and a steak wouldn't count as two different species. They're going to be one species, right? Me. It's just, uh, <laughs> it's just really thinking about what the main ingredient of the food is if you're trying to get enough variety. Oh, okay. One more. I'm going to sneak this last one in because it just snuck in here from Reed. What do you think about vitamin D for residents, residents of cloudy areas at Northern latitudes? Um, I'm not a doctor. If if you live at one of those places and your doctor tells you to supplement with vitamin D, then go ahead and do it. Um, there, there, vitamin D has become kind of a, a cult. Mm. So watch out for that. There are people pushing vitamin D and think, claiming it can do all sorts of, of crazy things. You do need it. Uh, most of us get plenty. 
Uh, but yeah, depending on where you live, that might be a different thing. And yes, Hawaiian pizza is just fine. Everyone enjoy the food you want. I love pineapple on my on my yeah. pepperoni pizza. Craig just said it was I could eat that. So if anybody has a problem with it, he said. That's right. You have my permission. Let me know. I have this on tape too. So that's going to be yeah. really great. Um, well, thank you so much. This was really a good talk. I think I'm going to have rewatch it again to get even more information and share this with some of my friends that are always on some sort of diet, <laughs> well, <laughs> which is kind of scary. But it is. I mean, you know, we we go up and down and up and down, and it just doesn't seem healthy. And the way we even think about food, the way we use the words, like you said, I was saying junk and the things we say, it's just, and it's so targeted at women. And we should, we should, we should end that. I mean,